the art of lithography was developed in 1796 by Alois Sinefelder, a professional theatre writer born in Prague, who studied in Munich and who was active in the city until 1834. Because he lacked financial resources to have his plays printed on a scale, Sinefelder conceived the idea of looking for a new way of printing, a cheaper one, and of associating with a friend who owned a printing press, to etch his works on copper and then print them in the ordinary way. Sinefelder used a very thin and elastic steel nib, which he had learned so well to handle, that, although it is more difficult to write on copper than on paper, he was soon in a state of quickly and accurately paint each character molded separately. However, from his first attempts, he saw that it would be impossible to write an entire page without making a few mistakes, which he would have to correct if he did not want to make incorrect copies. To facilitate and simplify the corrections, Sinefelder imagined taking equal amounts of wax and soap with a little black smoke, a carbon-based powder, mixing everything together, and dissolving this mixture in rainwater. This composition met his expectations perfectly. Thus was born this chemical ink so important for lithography, and which, later amalgamated with other ingredients, in suitable proportions, was further improved. By continuing his tests, Sinefelder soon found that it was easier to write on stone than on copper, and that characters were formed much better and more easily on stone. This made him think about the means he had to use to achieve printing using an etching stone. He remembered around this time that, at the age of five or six, he had seen a musical printing press in Frankfurt or in Mainz where the notes were engraved on a black slate. Sinefelder assumed that the attempt that had been made at that time to engrave the music on tin plates, was regarded as a secret, and had perhaps given someone the idea of AA testing on clay stone, but that this process had probably been abandoned, because of the extreme fragility of this material and the difficulty one may experience in engraving it, because it is a kind of stone which very quickly wears out all the tools, while tin is easier to engrave. One day, when Sinefelder was waiting for paper, Sinefelder wrote on the stone he had just brushed up, serving for this purpose with its ink composed of wax, soap and black smoke. When he wanted to wipe away what he had just written, it suddenly occurred to him to see what would become of the letters he had traced with his wax ink. He coated the board with etching, and also wanted to blacken them as one blackens movable fonts, to then print them. He mixed a dose of etching with ten doses of water and poured this mixture onto the writing board. Sinefelder then examined the effect of the etching, and found that the letters had acquired a depth of about a quarter of a line. All the tests which he then made for the writings on the stone succeeded him much better than those which he had previously made in hollow. It was much easier to ink and, for printing, it did not take a quarter of the force required by the hollow method which made besides that, in this way, the risk that the stones did break was greatly reduced. This way of printing was a whole new discovery, which no one had made before Sinefelder. So he could hope it would get him a patent, maybe even subsidies. At the same time it occurred to him that his discovery could also be successfully applied to the printing of musical notes. He showed a few proofs to a Munich court musician named Franz Glisnor, who told him on the spot that he was ready to form a musical printing establishment with him. Sinefelder eagerly accepted his offers and they established a lithograph in 1796. The first printed work was a composition by Glisnor. Sinefelder and Glisnor successfully printed different musical compositions with unequal success, both for their own account and that of a music publisher named Falger, based in Munich. This work made them imagine several kinds of presses, among which we can especially distinguish the branch press. Lithographic printing, at that time, cost five times less than copper engraving. An educational officer responsible for publishing educational books named Steiner contacted Sinefelder to print various church hymns for schools he asked him if he could not engrave or carve in stone the music of these hymns, so that they could be printed by the ordinary printing press. Sinefelder promised to try, but the depth required by the intervals and sites was much more difficult to dig on stone than on wood. In the meantime, Sinefelder and Steiner decided to print the lyrics first, using a regular press, and then the musical notes, with stone boards and the lithographic press. Experience had taught Sinefelder, when he was making musical notes, that the best way to succeed was to start by tracing them back on the stone with a pencil. It was the business of Franz Glisnor, who, 
as a skillful musician, had acquired great perfection in this genre. A symphony composed by Glissner was ready before Sinefielder discovered a new printing method, only the title was missing, which was then engraved in stone. It produced a good effect. Let us remark, on the technical level, the existence, in Sinefielder's lithographic technique, of the note instrument, a small copper or silver pipe having, at the bottom, the shape of musical notes, and which may contain enough chemical ink to make about 20 bodies of notes. This instrument is used to draw the five lines of the notes. In 1800, Sinefielder had already obtained a patent in London for his invention, and a few lesser known ones. In 1802, he obtained a patent in Paris. He sent one of his brothers to this city to direct a lithograph, which however did not have the expected success. In 1803, Sinefelder also requested a patent in Lower Austria, after receiving a privilege there. He had discovered the branch press the previous year, with which he could print several thousand copies of the same work in one day. This new press, combined with a new way of using stone, enabled him to expand his establishment. Sinefelder took two of his brothers with him, he taught them how to write and engrave on stone. He also took two apprentices to train them in printing. At the same time, in 1799, Maximilian Joseph, four of Bavaria granted Sinefelder and Glissner an exclusive privilege for 15 years. Then Johann Anton Andre Tilde copyright arrived in Munich. He was a music publisher active in Offenbach and had just acquired, from his widow, Constance, the rights to print 270 handwritten compositions by Mozart, including that of the Magic Flute. This publisher read in the Munich Gazette the announcement of the privilege received by Sinefelder and Glissner he inquired about the nature of the new method of printing with them. Sinefelder and Glissner showed him different pieces of music they had printed, and offered to visit their lithography. There, Johann Anton Andre Tilde copyright could examine things himself in a little more detail. The publisher, who was one of the most key figures in the music score industry in his country at the time, an owner of a beautiful musical printing press, was delighted with the results obtained by means of lithography, and especially that by passing his hand over the notes, his fingertips were not dirty, as it often happened then with the engraving method. The special attention with which Johann Anton Andre Tilde copyright learned the smallest details made Sinefelder see that he took a particular interest in his way of printing. Plates that were already written were engraved and printed in front of him, and worked perfectly. The skill with which the members of the lithography operated made it possible to print 75 pages in a quarter of an hour, and two at the same time. The speed with which the leaves dried, and the little color they used all revived the interest of Johann Anton Andre Tilde copyright to the highest degree. In his enthusiasm, the publisher asked Sinefelder to teach him his art in its full extent, in exchange for a substantial payment. Sinefelder accepted his proposal, and agreed with him to go a few months later to Offenbach in order to establish a lithograph there. Johann Anton Andre Tilde copyright used a special ink that kept particularly well there, a mixture of shellac, filler, soap made with beef fat, crystallized and purified lye and smoke black. Sinefelder left Johann Anton Andre Tilde copyright to form a new establishment in Vienna with his first partner. He obtained in this capital an exclusive privilege, which he left in 1806, to a person with whom he had made a very disadvantageous contract for him, because he preferred to work tirelessly for the improvement of the lithographic technique. Now that we have taken a broad look at the nature of musical engraving and lithography, as well as their early commercial applications, we may soon meet again to find out what computer science has brought to the sheet music industry since the 20th century. See you soon on this channel. Meanwhile, as you are a sheet music industry professional, we would like to draw your attention to the existence of the Y Music search engine which analyzes music using musical criteria based on the content of almost 40,000 pieces of music listed in the Y Music database. Today, music listeners listen to more music in a single year than their 17th century ancestors during their entire existence. However, online music services ask their users to have a specific query in mind when entering keywords, such as a title. Due to these language limitations, there is a gap between listeners' expectations and what they receive. 
in terms of musical content, it is not enough to type the word inspiring to receive as the first search result a piece of music that will automatically inspire us. This is even more obvious in a general search engine. If a user writes, in the search box, what are musical pieces similar to the Rite of Spring by Stravinsky, the results include links to different interpretations of the title, pages devoted to Stravinsky's life or to his work. However, no title similar to the Rite of Spring at the musical level is mentioned directly in the results and no link to listen to the similar music is provided. Everything must still be done. I dim for your favorite music. This means that listeners do not receive an answer to their original question. Neither general search engines, nor streaming services, are programmed either to analyze the musical content of a title and provide the results to the user or to establish direct musical relationships between different pieces of music. This is not their function, but it is the project of the Y Music team. We are passionate about our mission, which is to create a technological innovation in the field of music which aims to help all music listeners to understand it in more depth. Developed by a computer engineer recognized for his expertise in the music software industry, Y Music is more than an algorithm that searches for chords or melodies. It is the first musical search engine in the full sense of the term. Together, let us reinforce the achievements of technological evolution in the field of sheet music and allow it, allow us, to go further in our research. We invite you to test Y Music on our website.